Hey everyone, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, an advanced strategy with market DAX, uh, which is our daily deltas tool for swing trading. Uh, so if you're not familiar with uh, market net flow and market DAX, I would highly recommend going back to our YouTube channel. I'll link those videos in the description as well. Please watch them uh, to understand what these are, what are the differences, why do we need them. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'll quickly explain as well. So market net flow is a tool that shows it's an intraday trading tool, a day trading tool uh, that shows uh, cumulative premiums for calls, uh, cumulative net premiums for calls and puts against the S&P's price, which is SPY. When I say cumulative net, that just means uh, the calls bought minus the calls sold. That's the net premiums for calls and then puts bought minus the puts sold is the net premiums for puts. So if calls, if the green line, which is calls is going up, that means the flow is bullish. If red line is going up, that means flow is bearish. If these line, if any of these lines is going down, that means flow is bearish. And then on the bottom, we have convergence and momentum indicators. You can turn them on by clicking here and here. If you click here, you can turn the momentum indicator on. If you click here, you can turn the convergence indicator on. And then you can also see a uh, market net flow for different with different momentum sizes. Uh, with different histories of like two days, three day market net flow and with, uh, with filtering uh, for different expiration based contracts. So seven would mean you filter all contracts that are expiring after seven days. That's market net flow, but it's a tool that we use for day trading. It's not a swing trading tool. So in order to create a swing trading tool, we create we created market dex. A uh, market dex gives us a single bar every day. That bar updates every 15 to 30 minutes but it is supposed to be used at the end of the day or towards the last half hour of the day. Uh, so each bar uh, is giving us a prediction for the next day's returns. So if I'll just click here to remove the moving average, but if, uh, and I'll also look at the last 60 bars only. So each bar is telling us what is uh, going to happen the next day. It's giving us an expectation for that. Uh, Negative means, and since uh, negative means uh, next day is going to be bearish and positive green means next day is going to be bullish. And then if you want to uh, average these bars out to get a slightly smoother prediction for the next day or uh, two or three days, uh, because since we are smoothing the last couple of bars, now it's not just the next day's prediction. It's more of a proxy of how the next one, two, three days are going to go. Uh, you can use the moving average to do that but for the pu purpose of but, but for the purpose of this video let's just stick with one bar so each bar by the end of the day you will see this bar you will see this towards the middle and the start of the day as well but you'll really you really should be using this uh, towards the end of the day to make predictions or to make plays for the next day so let's assume this bar is bearish and what we'll do uh, on Monday or on the next uh, trading day is at the open or at the close of the last day when this bar printed we could have bought a put or we can buy a put at the open of the next trading day and we'll either close it if our stop loss of around 20% hits you can use different stop losses or if uh, or at the close of the day so there are only two closes right now you can close it uh, the, 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 the vanilla strategies the vanilla strategies you can either close it if your stop loss hits. I'm just talking about options contracts here, or you can uh, close it at the end of the day. And for options, for options contracts, uh, it's mostly recommended that you buy a contract at least about three to four weeks out, because shorter term contracts might be too risky and uh, might be too volatile. But we will talk about shorter term contracts as well. So that's tax. So the vanilla strategy that we started with was take a look at the bar, either buy or uh, either buy or uh, buy calls or buy puts if we're just talking about options at the end of the day or at the open of next day both work completely fine uh, if you buy at the open then you are all obviously you eliminate all these gaps up up and downs but those gaps up those gaps up and downs can also give you good profits if you bought at the previous close so totally your choice but you do that and then you either stop loss hits or you close at the end of the day even with that simple strategy, if you just uh, run that strategy on shares, so not on options, uh, and you just use one bar, uh, have a stop loss of 1% again, these are shares. If you run that, you get pretty good performance. 
in the month of august snp was down i believe about 3 to 4% while that simple strategy for shares was up about it went from 81% to about 87.9% so about uh, 7% so that's a very huge gap if you are just talking about shares with options it would obviously be much larger now that we have talked about the vanilla strategy is there any way we can create slightly more advanced strategies so that we can get better entries and better exits and that's the topic of today's video and i'm going to show you a couple of things first uh, so this is uh, the statistics or the results for the dex strategy uh, on friday so we had uh, let's go back we had a bullish bar on thursday so on friday our expectation was to have a bullish day which is why you are seeing dex as bullish here obviously on monday or the next trading day we will see uh, bearish share because we printed a red bar and let's assume we bought a call at the very open and again for the sake of simplicity let's just assume we bought a call that was expiring uh, on 6th that was that was expiring on 6th september and uh, that's tuesday uh, probably in a day or two and we bought that call at the open what would happen if you did that then uh, you quickly got about 30% profit uh, in about an hour or two and the green bar and the red bar that's actually the market net flow so if you just combine the green line and the red line take a difference that gives you this green bar on the back end which we call algo flow so market algo flow and market net flow are all the same things net flow is just a separation into calls and puts algo flow is just like a difference of the green and red lines so as long as the bar is green these bars are green we are bullish when these bars are red we are bearish so that's what we are seeing on the back end now the thing that i want to uh, show you is look at how you could have used those bars as a proxy of when to enter how long to stay into a position and when to exit so we started the day and uh, you won't see the entire day here and the reason for that is uh, we don't have like the entire days Uh, data for this particular contract uh, we get data for flow with premiums greater than 25k which means many smaller trades uh, we don't get data for them and then that causes us to sort of not have a minute by minute data for every single contract that that's out there because not every contract gets a new flow every minute so that's why you only see partial data for the day but it will still convey the point that i'm trying to convey here So this is the contract value the white line is the contract price and the, the green bar and the red bar is actually the algo flow the market net flow or the market algo flow uh, let's say you bought at the open we don't have to wait for any dip because at the open uh, the algo was green so that's like one or two minutes into the open uh, then you can see that uh, the, the algo the market net flow stayed green almost uh, till 13 till to 1 o'clock and then it turned red you're not seeing data afterward uh, after it turned red because we did not get much flow for that contract but there was a lot of time where the market stayed red but uh, from that point onwards we started not getting much data for this contract which is why we are stopping at about 14 but we went uh, till 16 like that was when the market was over okay so one thing that i want you to see here is that as Lo as soon as soon as the algo flow or the market net flow turned red meaning it turned bearish you could have exited your call and that would have given you about yeah, let's see so 1.2 and you entered let's say at about 2 so that would have given you a loss of about 30% i'd say sure you are using uh, we highly recommend using a stop loss of not more than 20 or 25% so you probably would have gotten stopped out before that but still let's say you did not have a stop loss then you can see that this market net uh, this market net flow would have been a good measure of when to exit the position as soon as the as soon as your strategy or your play turns invalid for that particular day because the next day we are expecting the market to be bullish 
and the flow is telling us up till this point that it is expecting the market to be bullish as well for the next day for that particular day because market net flow is for that day dex is for the next day now we are at the next day and we have to use market net flow to make predictions for that day and when the market net flow tells us that we are still bullish we can stay in a play but as as soon as it turns bearish that was the time that we had to get out let's look at some uh, contracts that are slightly out of the money and this is a good example so we started the day at about uh, we started the day at about 7.3 and then before uh, that the flow actually turned at about 1 you can see that the contract was actually up to about 7.5 and this is where we quickly uh, turned bearish and then the contract uh, went down quite a lot so it went from 7 to 4.5 which is a huge uh, loss but if you had just exited right around here because this is the first red bar then the max loss that you would have incurred again let's remove all stop losses just for the purpose of this, this discussion the max loss would be around 5 to 10 percent at max so we can see here that uh, just looking at these flips of market net flow uh, is a really good indicator to have a proxy of when to get out sure you you should definitely use a stop loss you should definitely exit at the end of the day but let's assume you were up 50 percent and then market net flow suddenly turned the opposite way you were up on a call 50 percent and market net flow suddenly turned bearish so let's assume market net flow turned bearish around here or here while you were up 10 percent now that might be a good way to take profits and this is what i did on friday i had a call contract for 10th strike i believe uh, for uh, september 26th not not for october 10th that contract went up i bought it at open that one uh, that contract went up about 25 percent and then we saw this market net flow starting to come down like the, these bars in the back we started to see them come down and when, once they reached around here uh, the momentum was starting to stop in the market so that's where i exited but that obviously comes with some experience we are just trying to stick with a simple strategy here which is as soon as the market net flow turns its direction uh, against the dex strategy that might be a good time to exit but let's assume we started the day red now what you can do is you should you can wait and i'm mostly just talking about people that have some time in their day if you do not have a have any time just stick with the vanilla strategy and it will work it will hopefully give you good gains and you'll be fine but if you want to like add another layer on top and be more precise and uh, be more accurate then you can use market net flow to to know when to enter and exit and let's assume we started uh, the day bearish but tax was telling us that today we need to have a bullish position so what you can do there is you, you can wait until the market net flow actually turn bullish and as soon as that happens you can then enter into a call position and that will hopefully give you more profits than what you would have gotten if you just entered at the open or the close of the prior day and just exited at the end of the day because now you are being you are pinpointing the right time to enter where flow is turning bullish or bearish because once this flow turns once the flow for the entire market let's assume turns bullish then at that time people are expecting the market to rally and so if you enter at that time or if you enter at close to that time when flow let's say is about to change not exactly at this time and that comes again with some experience then you can start entering and exiting at the right times and at very accurate uh, positions with good profit so this strategy is called a market cross strategy coupled with tax because this once it crosses above or below zero you'll see that at these points these lines cross each other so that's a cross so this is called mnf plus mnf cross plus dex strategy you can also use uh, and, and this uh, i believe this is where you should start with if you're comfortable with the vanilla strategy and you spend at least a couple of weeks with it I, i'd highly recommend doing that just to gauge how things are working don't start with complex strategies right away please uh, 
But if you spend some time with that and now you want to build on top of that, then the market crosses is the first strategy that I would recommend. Uh, then uh, you can uh, also look at our indicators, which is which is convergence and momentum. We have entire videos on what these indicators are, how to best choose them, but but you can choose them uh, to make entries and exits. One thing that I would highly, highly recommend that you should know, please remember this. Uh, this is the biggest mistake our users make with market net flow. When you are trying to use market net flow, make sure that market net flow has some sort of trend in it. And that trend would just mean that these green and red lines should have a clear direction. We did not have a clear trend uh, on, on the last trading day, which is why our strategy, our DEX strategy did not work that well. If we had a clear trend from the start where either calls were increasing and puts were decreasing, which would be, which would be very bullish, or puts were increasing and calls were decreasing, which would again be very bearish, we would have either gotten an exit very soon, like the bars would have turned red right away, so we would know we, we need to exit, or we would have uh, gotten a bullish entry very soon, or we, or we would have stayed bullish all day. Uh, so please uh, make sure that when you are trying to use market net flow, it has some kind of direction. So like there is some clear distance between the green and the red lines, and they, both the green and red lines, are going into opposite directions, not the same directions. Because if they're going in the same direction, then both call and put flow is somewhat similar and there is not much strength in the market net flow. So you wouldn't be able to get a lot out of it if there is no trend in the market net flow itself. So this is the day where we probably lost our stop loss hit, we lost uh, some money. Let's actually go back and see what happened on other days. So I will go back to let's do 31st so august 31st again and let's see what the dex so dex was dex told us that we should be bearish so if we just bought a put at the start of the day we would end the day with about 56 percent profits and the vid and the max drawdown would be at 25 percent okay now if we go back to our strategy then we will not enter at the start of the day because tax uh, because market net flow was bullish we would either enter here which is just like one or two red bars this is where sometimes like you probably need to wait a minute or two to see if this is actually red or we would enter here so these two positions would be where we would enter and then you can see from these points po points uh, onwards we did not really go down that much. We, we stopped out at about here, which would be 2.4 to about two. So that's like a max drawdown of 20%. And as long as you have a stop loss of more than 20%, you would still be in the play and then we would go up. But let's assume this red bar, like this quick red bar was not there. Then you would enter here, right? And you can see that if you entered here, then at no point in the day, the contract price went below this level. You can see it always stayed above that level, which meant there was no point in the day. If you followed this market cross strategy with the tax, there was no point in the day where you were in a loss. Versus if you just bought at the open, you might have gotten stopped out right away if your stop loss was 20%. But if you followed the market cross in the MNF, then you would have gotten about 56% profits by the end of the day. About 56%, about 50%. Without any drawdown. So like your contract would uh, not go into the negative territory. And this is what I mean by a trend. And this was not trend. So this day was still a bit choppy. But once calls started to go down and puts started to go up, at this point is where we actually have some trend in market net flow. We had some of it at the start of the day, but then you can see both calls and puts are moving in the same direction. So all this time, we do not have a trend. So we shouldn't be relying too much on market net flow. Once a trend starts to emerge around here and then here, calls going down, puts going up, that's a bearish position. You could have also entered around here or here. And then again, you can see that price 
this is now just S&P's price did not go above that level after that. So I hope this makes sense on how to actually use these crosses. Using convergence and momentum is a little bit trickier because it can change. It change it changes so many times during the day. So I'll again keep this video to just these market crosses. Obviously, you can have more than one market cross in a day, but most of the times we don't get many of them in that in a day. So it's easy to enter and exit based on them. Let's go to Tuesday. Okay, this is good. Now, now we start the day. Let's see what Dex was telling us. Okay, Dex was telling us that we wanted a bearish position. We wanted a bearish position, uh, which meant we were supposed to buy a put either at the start of the day or if you're following this strategy once the market net flow turned bearish. And again, uh, we are looking at like uh, weekly contracts, which I would never recommend. Uh, but just for the sake of simplicity, we can look at something else. Weekly contracts have the most data. So you can actually, for the purpose of this video, it's much easier to see what happened to the contract with respect to the market net flow. Uh, you can, you should always ha add some time. So uh, you can see that uh, once we open, apart from the first couple of minutes uh, yes apart from like first five minutes market net flow started to turn bearish and sure uh, you might say that this is all historical data so it's much easier to analyze and i would definitely agree with you but even if you like wait it till this point now this is a very clear divergence between what puts are doing and what calls are doing like huge distance pure trend huge distance going in opposite directions so this is not just now us looking at historical data this is like a valid play where we are not really biased we we, we said like we, we need a clear trend this is where we got it so sure don't even like enter here because you might not see this clearly once we are standing here because now we have the full day's chart so much easier to go back but once you reached here you would see a very clear trend emerging in the market net flow so let's say you entered around here even if you did that, then you can see that at no point in time, if you are just talking about weeklies, uh, did the contract price go down from that point onwards. We ended the day uh, with profits of about 244%, uh, but these are just weekly contracts. I would not recommend them if you are not an expert. Uh, so let's look at something more lenient. Okay, so you entered here, let's assume at about 9.5, and you ended the day at about 11.26 uh, that would be a profit of about 22 to 23 percent with no drawdown so the entire day your contract would not be losing any money now that is so cool uh, you just spent like five minutes analyzing the previous day's tax uh, to see what uh, should be your expectation the next day then you waited for market crosses so like if the day starts with uh, like algo flow, if the day starts with the sentiment and that never changes, then that's a cross as well for us. But that's a cross right from the start. So that just means flow is going in our direction all day. We never needed a cross. So f f with this example, you would not need to exit the entire day. You would stay into your position from the start till the end and you would, end, uh, you would exit at the end of the day with your 22 percent profits now those profits i believe were for contracts that are 45 days out if you're just looking at something like 20 to 30 days out then that would be about 40 to 50 percent profits which are i believe very good profits especially if you are following such a simple strategy let's look at one more day i have no idea what happened here this is very very choppy so let's see now this is now this all of this is something where I would not be using market net flow because this is where I would at least consider it because now we have a clear trend but even here you can see it stayed here for a while but then puts started to decrease as well even if they were below zero they started to decrease so these are the days that we just want to avoid using market net flow if you want to predict day, days like this then watch our video on predicting employed volatility that is very very useful in predicting actually days like this in advance so you can know whether market net flow might have some kind of chop uh, in it as well let's let's still see what happened so this was uh we we were supposed to go bearish you can see that if we were following this market uh, cross strategy then at no time 
were we supposed to go into our position during this time this is where we were like we were allowed to let's say, enter the contract and then this is where we had to exit it again because then the algo turned bullish again so these like let's say again no stop loss just for the sake of discussion you wouldn't end the day at 33 percent loss you would probably just end it from 2.6 to about 2.2 which is much which is much smaller than a 33 percent loss let's see if we can get another day i really want to show you like where it gets really powerful is where we have some clear days this is fine like at least yeah this is fine from this point onwards not so much but very clear uh, algo flow and very large distance i would still at this day i would still want these lines to have a clear sort of direction but they didn't but let's see what happened so we strategy was bullish really nice we stayed in the contract all day at no point so you can see although the contract price went down at no point did the overall market net flow went down by a significant margin so flow was telling us market net flow was telling us to stay in your contract all day and not worry about anything sure definitely have stop losses but still this gives you an expectation on what might happen and you can see like it so, it, so at this point we had no profits we probably were down about 10 15 percent and then we went all the way up by the end of the day with our 100% profits. Again, I'm just talking about weeklies here for simplicity. Let's see if there is some other mode. I really want to find, this is this is a good one because you this day you can see calls going up, puts going down until obviously at this point. Let's see. Okay, so we do not have stats for this. So let's go to some other day. Okay, really choppy day. So I'll skip this as well. Uh, really good uh, trick here anytime you see these spikes please ignore them because those are just single big orders and when we are looking at flow and when we are analyzing flow we never want to be looking at singular big orders we want to be looking at multiple big orders going in the same direction this was okay as well but uh, i think it might take some time for these uh, statistics to pop up so I'll actually stop right here uh, and uh, I'd, I'd hope uh, I've conveyed enough sort of information as to how to use uh, market net flow I'll go back and I'll populate the results for these other tables as well I hope this gives you an idea on how to actually use market net flow uh, to find entries and exits for your deck strategy which is look at a bar and make an anticipation for what is going to happen the next day uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you guys around.